Hi, Todd here from Urban Sound Studio. And as you can see, I am underneath my desk today because we are going to be taking a look at patch bays. We'll start with what is a patch bay? How do they work? How do we get them set up? We'll take a look at some terminology. For example, what is a normal? And then I'll show you how I use a patch bay to incorporate some of my analog gear within my studio workflow. Let's dive on in. Just as a quick history, patch bays were originally used in the telephone industry to connect callers from one line to another. Basically, in audio, we are using them for the same exact purpose, to route audio from one place to another. The patch bays I use are Switchcraft. They are pricey, but they have a rock solid build and the connections have been excellent for me. If we just search patch bays, we can see that there are a ton of brands, including ones that do not use patch cables, but instead allow for digital routing. Generally, we will see two types of patch bays, ones that accept quarter inch cables and ones that accept TT or tiny telephone, as are seen here. I've never noticed a difference in audio quality with quarter inch versus TT cables. However, a TT patch bay allows you to have many more patch points on a single unit and in general, I have found the TT cables to give me a better connection that are less prone to problems and the cables seem to hold up better. However, they are of course more expensive. My patch bay here is of a larger size with 96 patch points. On the back, we can see that this unit connects via DB25 cables, which allows us to break out into XLR, quarter inch, or connect to another DB25 device. And internally, we can see that the concept is pretty simple. We take inputs from the back of the unit, route them to the front of the unit, then we route them back out to the back of the unit. Please note that opening a unit like I did for this video can potentially void a warranty. Now let's switch over to my main studio workflow and explore what is a normal. A normal is basically an established path for an audio device to be connected from one point to another without needing a patch cable. Typically, our signal will flow from the top point to the bottom point on its own. This is what we call a full normal. And on my unit, putting the normal mode selector into the up position is full normal. It is basically the same thing as if I took a cable and connected it from the top to the bottom point, but all of that is routed already internally. And my mid position is non-normal. Basically, nothing will happen here unless I use a patch cable to route the audio from the top to the bottom or from one patch point to a different patch point elsewhere. My bottom position is what is called half normal. Just like fully normal, I do not need to plug in a patch to get signal from the top to the bottom. But what's interesting here is that I can take a line from the top, which essentially splits the signal, allowing me to get a duplicate of my audio. If I plug back into the bottom, this breaks the normal and makes it act similar to a non-normal point. Now let's take a look at how I use these different normal settings within my studio workflow. First off, I like using two patch bay units. The top unit features my preamps and summing channels, while my bottom unit is my effects and processors. Since I'm typically connecting a microphone directly into the preamps via a snake and then routing them to my interface, I keep the top inputs as fully normal. It automatically sends the preamp directly to my interface, but also allows me to patch a compressor or anything else to follow after my preamp. And as for my analog summing inputs, they run from my interface to the patch bay, and then to the summing mixer. Keeping them fully normaled allows the signal to automatically connect to the summing unit from my interface. But if I want to add additional processing, I could connect via the patch points. For example, let's take my Focusrite ISA preamp. I'll patch it to a DBX compressor, then to an EQ, then back to the original patch channel so the entire signal chain is sent to my interface to record. My bottom unit is kept almost in all non-normal positions. Since these are mostly compressors, saturators, EQs, and more, having them normal would mean that the output goes to the input, back to the output, back to the input, and you get a feedback loop internally on the unit without even connecting it to anything else. Therefore, I want these units connected so I could decide what signal routes into them and where they go next. 
Here, maybe I'll send from my summing output into an Empirical Labs FATSO, and then my Mog EQ before it hits my summing mixer. So what is the bottom half normal position good for? Well, I do not use it much, but it allows us to split the signal so I could send it elsewhere for monitoring. This means I could use it to set up something like Q mixes, but for me, it's more useful to split the signal for parallel processing. Since the signal still flows to the bottom, we can send the dry signal directly to our interface, but then send a copy to some other processing. Here, I'll take my AEA RPQ2 preamp, send a copy to a distortion processor for my room mics, and then return it to a different input so that I could have the dry and parallel distortion channels to mix together. Just remember that we will need to return the signal elsewhere because if we plug into the bottom destination patch point, we'll break the normal and lose our direct signal. Thanks for watching. How are you connecting analog gear in your studio workflow? What patch bays are you using and how are you setting them up? Let us know in the chat below. And as always, please help support this channel by liking the video and hitting subscribe.